Scatter diagrams and frequency polygons, both types of statistical diagrams. Now, this is on the level 7 grade C topics, but as far as I know, I think scatter graphs should be a grade uh, D level 6 topic, and frequency polygons tends to be a grade C level 7 topic, so we're putting both these on level 7. Okay, now this is not meant to teach you about these things, just to remind you of the, the main things about them. So, I've got an example of an exam question here. Um, a scatter graph is plots of points when you're combining, com comparing one thing against another. So in this case, height in centimetres against arm length in centimetres. And each point represents one piece of data, one data point, one person possibly. So this point represents somebody that was a height of 126 and an arm length of 68. And then another person, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people here. Okay, so what does this graph show? Well, scatter graphs tend to show one of three things. We have um, things where the points tend to go up in a, in, in a sort of scattered way, but generally in a line going up. We've got points that could be coming down in some sort of fashion. And we've got ones that are just randomly spaced all over the place. So there's no general idea of where it's going up or down. Now, ones going up are called positive correlation. Ones that are coming down are called negative correlation. And this is no correlation. So what we're talking about here is the technical word is correlation. Now, you don't have to use the word correlation. Although, actually, this is asking you what type of correlation. So this is going up to the right, so this is positive correlation. Now, if you were just asked what the connection was, you could explain it as in the, the highest, the taller somebody is, the longer their arms are. That's the connection. As one thing increases, the other one's increasing. A negative connection is one thing increases, the other one would decrease. So as the height increases, um, something would be decreasing in comparison to that. Um, but not in this case. And then and this one would be no correlation if they were spread out. So this one is just nice positive correlation. It's quite nice, um, um, what we call high correlation, because when we've got a line of best fit, which tends to go with correlations, we draw a line through this data so that we have um, some on one side, some on the other, so it's fairly uh, well through the data. Now, lines of best fit are never accurate when you're just drawn by eye, which is what we tend to do in this sort of level. Um, but we can see there that most of the points are very close to the line and therefore there's nothing spread out so this is close high correlation but the key thing is positive so the closer the points are to the line the, the higher it is but we're not asked to do that um, a different student in year 11 has a height of 148 centimeters estimate the arm length so this is where the line of best fit comes in it doesn't actually ask you to draw a line of best fit but to estimate one from the other you really need to draw the line in to use that to estimate so we use um, I think that's got an arrow on it. Yeah, okay, so a height of 148 centimetres. So we go across 148, which is about there. We draw an arrow up to the line, and then we draw a line across to here. And this will give us an estimate of what, if, if this is a good correlation, which is that they should roughly have an arm, arm length of 84 centimetres. Now, obviously, that depends on the line you've drawn, but most lines you draw through this data will give you something around that value. It's very important that you actually draw your lines on there so people can see what you've done and what value you've got off that. And obviously the line of best fit is very important to draw on it. Okay, so that's the essential parts of scatter graphs. Um, frequency polygons, interesting topic, tends to be a um, well, grade C topic. Um, now frequency polygons, as I learned it, is where you plot the midpoint of the top of a histogram. But... Um, sort of questions you get asked are not really histograms this is like a frequency diagram so if I was to draw some sort of bar charty frequency diagram type thing um, if you know want to know more about actual histograms then then you can watch a video on that I've done one in detail on histograms but if we had a frequency diagram the midpoint at the top of these bars here 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 and here and here are the points that we need to join up for a frequency polygon. Okay, so if I then get a ruler and join those points, uh, not a ruler, straight, well, a ruler, 
the straight line and join those up with the straight line. Then that is the green line there is the frequency polygon. Um, shouldn't really have the bars on there. So you should be able to draw it without the bars, but that's what it should look like. So when we're drawing it, we're looking for the midpoint of this, which is 7.5. We'll just look at the two values it's between 5,000 and 10,000, and that's the midpoint, and we draw it at the right height, uh, which would be 5 in this case. And then this one, 53, halfway between those and so on. Then we join them up. That's a frequency polygon. And that's all there is to that one. Um, like I said, though, frequency polygons should be drawn on histograms, but most questions that are asked to draw frequency polygons are really just drawn on a frequency diagram. Um, to calculate the histogram for this, would be, you'd have to work out the frequency density, which is a lot more complicated, a lot more complicated and not done at this level. So there we go. That's what a frequency polygon is.